Hey guys, this video is brought to you by AerospacePal.com. We deliver free content tailored specifically to the aerospace community. Come check out the site. In this video, we'll be going over Induced Signal Susceptibility, Section 19 of DL160. The whole point of this test is to induce E-fields and magnetic fields onto your EUT and interconnecting cable. These tests simulate the often close routing of interconnecting cables on the aircraft. So there's five tests for this section. Magnetic field on the EUT, electric field on the EUT, magnetic field on the cable, electric field on the cable, and spikes induced on the cable. So there's three letters that make up the category. First letter makes up the test level. Going from most severe to least severe is C, Z, A, and B. C was added for critical products that had long interconnecting cables or minimum spacing between other interconnecting cables. The second letter refers to the primary power of the EUT, C being center frequency, N narrow frequency, W wide frequency. The third letter determines whether E fields will be run on the EUT. This is denoted with E or X. X means it's not run, E means it will be run. The test level for magnetic fields is run at 20 amps regardless of your category, with the frequency determined by the second letter of your category. Electric fields is run at 170 volts regardless of your category, again with the frequency determined by the second letter. However, E fields will not be run if X is marked as the third letter of your category. Test levels for magnetic fields and electric fields on the cable are a little less straightforward. But you can easily compare the categories by looking the max across the fundamental frequency. C is the most severe, followed by Z, A, and B. It's important to note that for these two tests, the test level scales depending on your cable length. If your cable length is less than 1.5 meters per the aircraft specifications, these tests do not need to be run. Last but not least, spikes induced on interconnecting cable has a test level of 600 volts. This spike is induced on an adjacent cable and not the EUT cable. Okay, let's go over how to run these fairly primitive tests. Magnetic fields is simply executed by running 20 amps at 400 hertz through a straight wire located within 0.15 meters of the UT. The wire must extend 0.6 meters beyond each extremity of the UT. This can be accomplished by simply sticking a wire through PCB piping for ease of handling. The source of the noise must be a minimum of 0.6 meters away. Simply sweep the radiating wire from the front face of the EUT up to the top. Now go across the top and down the back edge. Then rotate the straight wire 90 degrees with respect to the EUT and repeat the test on the untested edges. Make sure to sweep all edges and sweep at a rate slower than the system response time. E fields or electric fields on the EUT is done by applying 170 volts RMS at 400 hertz on a straight wire of 0.2 meters within 0.01 meters of the EUT. Again, sweep along all sides of the EUT. For magnetic fields on the cable, run a high current wire along each bundle of the EUT to be tested. This wire should be within 5 millimeters of the bundle. Apply the forward current specified per your category. For electric fields on the cable, wrap a high voltage wire around the cable, a minimum of three wraps per meter. Apply a voltage to the wire in accordance with the category. This high voltage is usually achieved with an audio amplifier and a high ratio transformer. Lastly, spikes induced on the interconnecting cable is run using the setup shown. The setup in DL160 shows a 28 volt power supply. However, the only requirement is that the signal achieved complies with figure 19.6 of D160. The waveforms achieved will not be perfect. In figure 19-6, the note recognizes that some spikes will be less than 600 volts peak to peak. Aim for at least 75% of the spikes being above 600 volts peak to peak. The acceptance criteria for each one of these tests is a functional upset tolerance test. Monitor your unit during the test and ensure that there's no performance degradation and that you've passed the test. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found this informative, interesting, or just better than reading a 500 page standard, stop back at aerospacepal.com and tell other engineers about this free resource. Don't have a copy of D160? Check out the link below.